going into the remainder of the series as well then we move on to the women's cricket team where there's a major development after losing the west indies uh, two west indies in the home series 3-0 <coughs> they were clean swept by the visiting west indies women's team the selection committee has been dissolved and a new selection committee has been formulated it includes uh, mohammed uh, you know uh, if you talk about the overall scenario of this as well if you want to know the players it includes abdul razak uh, mr asit shafiq is part of this we've got uh, mr mohsim rashid uh, pakistan women's team's head coach right now also so part of the selection committee nida dar it also includes marina ikbal in the selection committee as well and of course like i said that the new selection committee is now going to be taking charge of affairs as well uh, but i still have a problem that i think that changing the selection committee won't change the fate of this women's cricket team it has to be a structured approach you cannot uh, discuss it as a last subject in the pakistan cricket team you have to separate it and bring it at par and priority as men's cricket as well only then can we uh, see this as well another news from the women's cricket is that uh, former pakistan team captain and women's player bisma maroof has retired from all forms of international cricket and uh, i think 6262 international runs 18 international wickets 33 half centuries amongst her career more than 270 matches uh, uh, throughout across uh, the two formats uh, congratulations to bisma maroof on a stellar career to her family her uh, coaches uh, the pakistan cricket team everybody that has been involved with bisma uh, but a uh, decision taken at the very right time i think and uh, this is now uh, i think a hallmark of uh, any player that they want to uh, say goodbye to cricket uh, uh, at a very pertinent time when you know when uh, they can consider themselves that you know they no longer want to play and they want to give a position to any uh, next upcoming cricketer as well so thank you very much bisma maroof uh, and i think pakistan really thanks her for her services then we move on to the icc rankings babar azam has dropped mm-hmm. to fifth position uh, shahin shah afridi in his rankings has gained a position as well so we'll talk about that in detail then we move on to the t20 world cup trophy that is in pakistan the trophy is going to be reaching islamabad and will remain in the country for 3 days of course the t20 world cup is to be played in june in the united states of america and the west indies then we talk about the women's t20 world cup qualifier and uh, pakistani former captain international commentator broadcaster presenter uh, a part of the ptv fraternity as well as an expert sana meer has been named as the ambassador of the uh, women's t20 world cup qualifier and she of course represented pakistan in 226 international games and 137 as skipper so congratulations to you sana it's a proud moment for pakistan cricket and pakistan fraternity as well as we have our very own skipper uh, being nominated as the ambassador then we move on and we discuss the asian champions league alain club has qualified for the final it has defeated saudi club al hilal 5-4 on the aggregate as well so that's mm-hmm. the latest update from the world of football time now to introduce our guest to discuss cricket uh, particularly in studios we've been joined first of all by cricket commentator international broadcaster presenter and our sports expert kiasif ahmed assalam alaikum how are you sir wa alaikum assalam ahmed i'm perfect thank you very much we've also been joined by sports expert mr malik usman assalam alaikum usman how are you wa alaikum assalam i'm doing well thank great you. to have you on the show as well uh, now of course uh, usman uh, moving on to the fourth t20 there are a majority of the changes that are ex- expected but like i said that the confidence that we need to carry in the series is very very important how do you see the developments of the pakistan cricket team i think some of these things are simply blessing in disguise mm-hmm. uh, we all always wanted that they should be chopping and changing not just for the sake of it but we need rotation we need freshness in the squad as well and we need more and more players to get the opportunities especially when you have a game at home and you have an opposition which is not its first string its second third fourth string team you need to actually experiment with a lot many players and you have to strengthen your bench as well because world cup is around the corner and you just don't know you can have injuries to your key players and suddenly you are losing out on your players 
so for that you need to have many as many players as possible who are match ready and uh, suddenly these things are popping up azam khan rizwan and now uh, niazi is injured i think it will give more opportunities to the other players as well who are actually knocking at the door for some time in for pakistan cricket team they want to play in the playing 11 <coughs> and this would be one good opportunity for them but uh, for me it is about the selection and the captain how open they are by inviting those players into the playing 11 and how seriously they are going to take their performance for example you have brought back muhammad amir and imad wasim they did not have much of a role to play in this series so far amir played only one game one was washed out he was rested for one of those games when you are bringing players after so long into the pakistan national team i think they should be getting an opportunity your senior players who have cemented their place in the playing 11 or in the squad they must be rested and you have to give more and more opportunities to other players see pakistan with its full strength side has nothing to gain from this series by beating a second third string team and new zealand uh, has everything to gain they have, most of their players are playing in the leagues they are not playing in this playing 11 but they can figure out one or two good players who can become part of their future playing 11 the in that case pakistan should also be doing this and they should they need to sh uh, show a broader view of the things so that pakistan has as many resources as possible going not into the world cup but in the future as well uh, very pertinently put by usman asif uh, i think uh, i'm sure you'll agree as well uh, that you know you teams like new zealand or any other team have set a very good example of how they you know try and test players in bilateral series well i think that uh Uh, if we talk about the way usman bhai was saying that uh, we require some fresh blood and but we didn't try and we didn't give chances um, and uh, pakistan came up with the full force talk about babar azam rizwan see that was the 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 full side of pakistan which we could expect to play in the upcoming t20 world cup we haven't given chances to the new players and that's the problem with the mindset that's the problem with the mindset of pakistan cricket board and i think that uh, we have plenty of work to do and i have asked this question to azir mahmood during the press briefing that what's the problem with the 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 mindset of england australia new zealand their their uh, if you talk about their energy their confidence it's always really high why pakistan is struggling so uh, his answer was very very simple that it's always about and it's all about grooming that how you're grooming yourself and how the pakistan cricket board is working on that last night's press conference of babar azam to be honest if you see that i can smell a rat and i could tell you that the way he was replying the the, the and he was giving the answer that wasn't the way that wasn't the confident way of a skipper who is going to lead in the world uh, upcoming t20 world cup a couple of questions regarding the the uh, you know rumors about the team he said nothing is going on but when you see on the practical when you see in the field yes something is fishy fishy let's talk about the shaheen shah afridi's performance shadab khan then the shadab khan statement uh, you should be working on those issues and i'm 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 quite sure that if the new uh, regime and the new management if they will work on these issues they could uh, settle down settle down it and uh, being skipper babar azam you are the responsible either you are uh, losing either you're not performing well even if the team is not performing well because you are going by your choice you are um, uh, pushing to to the selection committee that i want these players and after that if you're not getting results then who will be the responsible one and only one personality that is babar azam uh I think that press conference has opened a lot of eyeballs as well like I said that it's being taken very pertinently uh, but you know we got to discuss all of uh, all of these things very calculatedly because like I said that the time to the world cup is very very less also joining us on sports section now is cricket commentator and expert Kashif Shabir assalam alaikum how are you sir wa alaikum assalam all well thank great you great to have much. you on the show as well Kashif now uh, we're expecting a couple of changes today as well four to be uh, you know precise the, what have been rumored uh, right now but obviously once the playing 11 comes we'll be sure about that uh, but overall I think into the fourth T20 now uh, how would you see some of the de development surrounding pakistan cricket team i think it is very important for pakistan team to experiment because we have all new faces available in the squad secondly usman and uh, k asif is talking about pakistan team about the experimentation i think experimentation has to be done and i think this is a, a blessing in disguise for pakistan because this is a c rated rated uh, team of new zealand and pakistan can take the leverage of experimenting against this kind of a squad i think now we should talk about a team without babar and rizwan mm -hmm. without shahin shah afridi without naseem shah and let's see how Even this team without shadab 
-hmm. All right, for, for some extent, <laughs> without yeah. Shadab as well, but you need to have some captain available in the team, and I, I would put Shadab as a captain, as a oh. skipper of the team. Okay. Like uh, Ahmed, we talked in the last program that Pakistan has chosen seven batting uh, bat, uh, bat, uh, batsmen, and out of those seven, five are openers. We have not yet tried and tested Fakhar Zaman as an opener. We have not tried Usman as an opener. And in the past, in PSL, we have seen that these two players, they have performed well only as an opener. When you'll, you will bring them down, they will not perform. And this is exactly what has been done by these players. Usman, Usman has the skill of using the, 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 power, the, the power circle, the, the circle, but he is not being able to use that in, in, the, in the recent matches against New Zealand. So I think the problem lies in experimentation. The, the only solution for Pakistan is experimentation. And we have seen that our ballers, they are not well equipped. We are not ready for the international matches. I mean, look at Shaheen Shah Afridi, look at Naseem Shah. I don't, I don't know what has gone wrong with Naseem Shah, why he, his pace has dropped down to 136, 138. He was a baller of around 150, 152, but now he has dropped down to 136. Amir, again, 136, 137, Shaheen Shah Afridi, 136, 137. You cannot expect these kind of ballers against quality sides like Australia, New Zealand, e England, uh, and India. So you have to do something. You have to bring something different for, 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 from, for, from Pakistan against all these this kind of squad. And only this can happen if you can experiment, if you can give the leverage, if you can give these players the option where exactly they want to play. You ask Usman, and I'm sure he will say that I want to play as an opener. So let's try him as an opener. Let's try Usman and Saim as an opener. Let's try Fakhar Zaman as an opener and see what kind of result we can get out of them. Let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, anything. Uh, uh, I mean, out of Nawal, uh, sorry, out of Babar Azam and Rizwan, we need to think out of the box. We need to have out of box solution if you want to really carry this team for the World Cup. Because I tell you, this team is not well equipped for the World Cup. You talk, you're talking about four changes in this match. Let's see what kind of changes Pakistan squad can bring about. Do they have that confidence? I don't think so because Pakistan want to win. They desperately want to win against mm -hmm. this New Zealand team because a lot of critics, they are waiting for Pakistan to lose against New Zealand and then they can talk about Babar Azam, they can talk about Shaheen Shah Afridi and they can talk about Rizwan. Let them say whatever they want to, but you please experiment. You please find the best 11 for Pakistan and the best uh, sequence for, for the Pakistan team because the, our only problem at one time was batting. But now I suspect our problem is batting plus bowling. So we need to find the best available solution for Pakistan. Well, certainly. Uh, Asif, would you like to add to that uh, well, as well uh, when you talk about argument? I would like mm -hmm. to uh, ask a couple of questions from Kashyap Bhai. Mm -hmm. Kashyap Bhai, you rightly said that uh, uh, the pace is going down if we talk about Naseem Shah, Shaheen Shah Afridi, and uh, Amir. But the question is that we had a bowler of 150, 155. That was Haris Rauf. What happened with him? Why he's not playing? Uh, uh, once Pakistan Cricket Board uh, requested him to play test cricket, he said that I will focus on the white ball cricket. Uh, and now he's no, even not available for the white ball cricket as well. And if you see his uh, uh, performance from last couple of years, even after the World Cup, uh, it was, uh, you, 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 you can't say that it was up to the mark. It was even below the average. So I think that when we talk about the pacey ballers, we do not have any options. We have Vaseem Jr., we have Zaman Khan. The problem is that the mainstream bowlers, why they aren't bowling good. And in the last T20, if you talk about the line or length of Naseem Shah, that was absolutely, uh, I could say, ridiculous, the way he was bowling to Chapman. And uh, Chapman was playing him so easily. So I think that when your players aren't playing domestic cricket and you're just focusing on four overs game and that is PSL, I think you won't get any sort of benefit from them. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Uh, uh, Usman, I think uh, the larger picture is something that we need to consider over here as well. Uh, I think I, Asif's questions are very, very important. But I just want to add one more point to it uh, and then probably I'll take the discussion to Kashyap Bhai. That, you know, Asif, if you will allow me, I just want yeah, Usman sure, Bhai, sure, Usman sure, Bhai sure, to chip in on sure. this because he mentioned something very important. The fact is that the captain right now is in a position where uh, I think it's going to be a very important phase for Babar because coming back, he's, he's a, he, he has to have, have a different mindset. But he needs to stamp his authority over the team right now. This is the problem with Pakistan cricketer. It's not the, a new problem. It's very, very old. First and foremost, the management has to look into these things. 
that uh, who are allowed to speak to the media, to what extent they can speak to the media, and on what topics they can speak to the media. Rizwan is getting, uh, bringing out these statements which are very, very irritating for Pakistan cricket. Even in New Zealand, he spoke about that this opening partnership was uh, disbanded and I wanted Babar up the order. Now he's going one down, he says that I don't play well here. Uh, in a team, a game where a team performs, where does this I come from? Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. win as a team, you lose as a team. It's not about I perform well at some position or I perform well on this uh, phases of the game and all that. So I think Rizwan has to shut his mouth. And uh, coming for going further, many of, of your players, see, uh, if you, someone is facing the media, uh, that should be the statement from the team. It's not about Babar Azam, it is about Pakistan cricket team. Mm -hmm. If Babar says something, it is about Pakistan cricket team. Or if the coach comes forward or the manager mm -hmm. comes forward, it has to be the statement of Pakistan cricket Because team. all of them are contradicting, right? Uh, they all are contradicting. Mm -hmm. It is creating a mess which already Pakistan cricket mm -hmm. is for some time now. Mm -hmm. But uh, And then the results on the field are not working well. The problem with me, uh, what I think with this Pakistan team is, that once you brought back Babar, you knew what was in store. This is how he plays his cricket. This is his style of playing cricket. He doesn't go over uh, out of the box. He doesn't go too aggressively. He is not ultra aggressive if, if we want to talk about it. And it's not just about Babar Azam. It is about this Pakistan cricket team. Since T20 uh, internationals came into existence, there is only one batsman who has a uh, strike rate of 140 with a reasonable average. And that is without any surprise, Shahid Afridi. But how effective he was in T20 cricket as a batsman, uh, that is for for open to debate mm -hmm. okay so as far as our batsmen are concerned i think they are, they have this romance with the numbers see these many matches this many run scored this is my average it has nothing to do with t20 cricket it is all about impactful innings suddenly when shadab has become the talk of the town and just recently he was someone that pakistanis wanted out of the team and they wanted to sama mir abrar ahmad or whatever name you could call if if i could have bowled a bit of spin i could have been named as well into the media so but now <laughs> suddenly Shadab is being touted as a very very important player for Pakistan because he's an excellent all-rounder. Mm -hmm. uh, Kashif Bhai was talking about that Pakistan has a problem not about their batting but also their bowling. I think he missed out on an evergreen point that is our fielding. <laughs> <laughs> so we are lacking in all three departments and Pakistan is having a mess not just on the field but off the field as well mm -hmm. which is actually now become the biggest problem for Pakistan side. They have to play as a mm -hmm. unit. Winning and losing is part of the team. I, I, I can agree with this that it's a huge embarrassment losing to a second third string team and mm -hmm. that can cause problems that is one Certainly. of the reasons you have to bring your uh, mm -hmm. uh, your uh, fringe players so that they can perform and you don't have these kind of pressures to deal with. Certainly, certainly. I, I think we will continue with this discussion. But right now, like I said, that a major development for Pakistan. It's a proud moment that former Pakistan captain Sana Meer has been named as the ambassador of the ICC Women's T20 World Cup qualifiers. And we're very honored to be joined by the former skipper, international commentator, broadcaster, presenter, uh, Ms. Sana Meer uh, on the show as well. Assalamu alaikum, Sana. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, Thank you. I'm good. Well, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for taking our time. First of all, congratulations to you. I think the entire nation and the cricket fraternity, especially we here at PTV, are very, very uh, happy and feel proud as well. Uh, how would you highlight this? Because obviously, I think the, the, with each passing day, uh, cricket is becoming more and more diverse. Uh, thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, definitely, I think the way cricket is moving forward, it is so important to uh, recognize these nations who are coming up as right at the moment we are talking thailand is giving a really tough time to sri lanka who have uh, appeared in every world cup that has been played in women's cricket so these tournaments these pathways tournaments are so important in recognizing these teams who have been fighting so hard working so hard to be in a world cup uh, we saw how thailand were really good in the last t20 world cup 2020 in australia so all these uh, tournaments, they have a huge significance and uh, I do hope that coming forward we can recognize all the players who represent their countries, whether they are from associate nations or the full members. Uh, when we talk about the ICC's particular focus as well, the IC Women's T20 World Cup and also now the Under-19, like you also mentioned, that it's very, very important to understand the model. Uh, diversity is certainly there. We've got new nations who are coming up, performing as well. Uh, but obviously, a lot of these international players are spending a lot of time with each other as well. So, the sharing of experience, how important does it become when you're talking about an ICC tournament? Yes, I think it's, it's hugely important. Um, that's why I think uh, in the global game, uh, 
everyone is really committed in the growth of women's cricket and we don't really see players coming up when you are a mentor or an ambassador that which country they are from whatever you know about the game you try to pass it on and the whole essence of these tournaments even when you are playing we saw new zealand giving tips to thailand in the last world cup so uh, we all understand by now that uh, women cricket is going to move forward when if it there's a global development there's a global growth because four or five countries doing well won't make uh, it a global sport so i do think uh, icc is making a lot of steps to make sure that the uh, game is growing globally and these tournaments these initiatives are all part of that way well certainly but at a final moment i think it's a bit of a cliche but i must ask you that if you were to uh, pick one upcoming developing nation in cricket which one would that be i think um, i would still think thailand i i really rate their work ethic uh, even though their skill wise uh, they still need to improve uh, uh, maybe uh, a lot uh, at some point but the way their work ethic is the discipline that they have shown i do think that they they will go really further well certainly sana thank you very much for joining us and once again congratulations to you on uh, this historic achievement as well so much thank you very much that was former captain pakistan cricket team sana meer who's also been appointed as the ambassador of the icc women's t20 world cup qualifiers and like i said it's a great proud moment that the diversity of cricket is celebrated and you have uh, uh, a pakistani there pertinently to act as the ambassador now coming back uh, to this uh, dilemma of the pakistan cricket team kashif a lot of very uh, hard ended questions have been thrown by k asif and i think uh, also because why i wanted to smans <coughs> perspective in all of this as well that right now there are contradicting statements from the players the management you know certain things are poles apart but the captain's authority needs to be stamped over here if they wanted to you know for 3 4 years be a consistent model for cricket uh, first of all let's talk about what uh, k asif mm-hmm. uh, the points that he raised i think they are, these are all very pertinent points and the problem with the pakistani bowlers is mainly because of their injury because all of the pakistani fast bowlers they are injury prone and i think they are not 100% recovered if you talk about shahin shafridi once he recovered from his knee injury he never bowled uh, to its to his maximum pace and that is the problem secondly talking about naseem shah again injury problem he had this uh, uh, elbow injury or whatever shoulder injury whatever the injury was he is not 100% recovered and he is not bowling at his 100% pace talking about harisov again injury prone he has not been playing the psl because he had this problem and he is not still available for the team so that is a problem for main uh, pakistani bowlers if you talk about uh, uh, mohammad amir i think he is old enough because he cannot now he can go he cannot go back to the age of 19 20 he cannot recover to the, to the original pace that he had once so he will not be going back to 140 150 so we have to compromise well, he's still bowling it. above 140 we have to compromise we no, no, but to... but amir is still bowling above 140 no he's around 136 138 one odd ball maybe mm-hmm. yes 140 but he is not consistent mm-hmm. we need consistent bowlers who can bowl at a pace of 140 145 well, haris Har- rove but that turned out right as said that he, if he could ball spin he mm-hmm. can be included in the pakistan <laughs> team so if you give me ball i'm sure i can ball 140 maybe one ball <laughs> after 100 balls maybe one ball at a pace of 140 but Kasi bhai, we not... need we need you behind the stumps <laughs> that is the most important part where we need but you. ahmed that is not enough we need cons- assistant bowlers who can ball at that particular pace now mm-hmm. coming back to another point pace is not important at all because at this point if you ball at 160 and if you ball straight that is very comfortable for the batsman to play mm-hmm. but you need to have swing you need to have some you know seam the ball should move around and that is what is absent in all these pakistani bowlers the, the bun who can who can see, seam and swing is naseem shah and to some extent i think mohammad amir he can swing but mm-hmm. shahin shafridi yes he can swing but just for one for for maybe five six balls that's it he cannot swing as much as is required in the international squad so this is exactly what the pakistani problem is 
Now, if you go back to PSL, we saw Muhammad Ali, he balled brilliantly well in, mm. in PSL. But where is Muhammad Ali? He is not in the squad. He is not available for the, for the international team. He is not available and Kashim, for the, the World the leading, Cup. And the leading wicket taker of the PSL, Osama Mir, has been benched right now. He's, he's being benched. Mm. Maybe he's, he's rested because we want him for the World Cup. <laughs> so, we don't want him to be injured as well. So, I, so, Muhammad Ali is one baller who should have been in the team, but he is not available. I think we are waiting for him to get more experience, to surpass 40, and maybe then he will be included in, in the squad. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is the reason that I can understand. Mm -hmm. Because he is one baller who has been continuously playing the domestic uh, system. He is being in the domestic. He is performing. He is giving results, but he is not qualified for the international squad. So this is how important our domestic circuit is, and this is how importance we are giving to our domestic system. So this is the dilemma of our team. Now coming to th what uh, Usman has said. So look, we are all concerned. We are all talking about individuals. We want the individuals to prosper. We are talking about their statistics. We are talking about the statistics of Babar Azam, statistics of Rizwan, but we are not talking about the team. What is the requirement of the team that we have all forgotten? We, we, we want Babar Azam to be number one batsman. We want Mohammad Rizwan to be number two batsman. But where is Pakistan? Pakistan is, 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 is around seventh or eighth number. We are not concerned at all. So we have to bring this concern back in the team. In the, and where in the team? To the captain. Captain has to be, you know, above all. He has to think about Pakistan first. He has to think about Pakistan team first. And I can assure you, if you think about Pakistan, if you think about team, he will be batting at number four and number five. And to, to, I can go to this extent that Baba Razam is not a T20 player, for God's sake. If you have Usman, if you have Niazi, if you have uh, Fakhar Zaman, if you have Usama Mir, but still you are persisting Baba as an opener, I think then uh, this is the result that we're going to get. We stand nowhere in the World Cup, Ahmed, I'm telling you, we stand nowhere. All these teams, they are preparing for the World Cup. I, they are finding their right. best 11, I, but we are no. focusing on individuals. Individual Babar Azam, Rizwan, Babar Azam, Rizwan, and that's it. I think uh, when Pakistan are nowhere, that's when they become somewhere. Mm. But that hallmark to take it consistently is very dangerous but for a future course of action. We, you want to be team. Look, I think Asif today mentioned on another platform mentioned something very important. He said whenever you talk about the rankings right now consistently, you won't see Australia there. And immediately they win any form of the mm. ICC tournament. Yes, so I think that's a that's a big model that we need to study. But Asif, I think uh, Kashavi makes a lot of sense with this argument. But you know this contradicting statement and the captain's authority right now, because like you mentioned as well, that uh, everything is not right as far as the Pakistan dressing room is concerned. Well, I think that once I thought that uh, May and uh, Kashibai will remain on the same page, but <laughs> in the last, uh, the way he said about Usman Khan, so we, are, we aren't on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, he has taken a very important name, Muhammad Ali, 147 first class wickets. And if you see his statistics uh, during the Pakistan Super League, because now everyone is looking towards Pakistan Super League. Is you're performing well there, they will pick you for the Pakistan team. Uh, Kashif Bhai, uh, thank you very much. You're br you, you brought a very important point that the, uh, if Muhammad Ali, he has bowled in the power play, you could see his economy, it's around six. And if when he bowled uh, over number seven to over number uh, 15, his economy is around seven to 7.5. And if you talk about the death overs, his economy is again, once again, six. A perfect bowler who could bowl six yokers in an hour. I think that I don't know why selectors miss the chance and miss the trick to give him chance. I think that that was the pressure of Amir, Shaheen Shah Afridi, Naseem Shah, because everyone is looking towards them. But for me, he is the right choice for the white ball as well. So, Muhammad Ali, we feel sorry for you. Now, the second point, that, uh, and that is, and then of course, when we talk about the Usman Khan, right before uh, his inclusion in the Pakistan side, I had said during the show that I cannot see his international future. Why? That we have given chances to the Asif Ali, Khushtil Shah, uh, all of them, they were technically not perfect. Mm -hmm. And this is the same problem with the Usman Khan. I have watched him in UAE. I have watched him during the D10, D50, Emirates Cup. And uh, yes, he's a good hitter of the ball. But you know that when we talk about and when you do, uh, go, you go for the comparison, that there's a huge difference between international cricket and the franchise cricket. In franchise cricket, 
you're only playing for your franchise. And in international cricket that everyone is looking towards you because you're playing for the green shirt or you're playing for your nation. So I think that uh, once again, we made a very wrong decision to give him chance in international cricket. Yes, now he got the cap. I wish him good luck, but he would have to work on his technique. I don't know what the batting coach is. And, you know, Mohammed, is, Mohammed Yusuf is uh, there with the, uh, as a selector in the team. Please give him some suggestions that how to play spin. Once again, I'm bringing this point because Kashyap Bhai was not in the last couple of he was not here in the last couple of shows. Kashyap Bhai, if he's not able to to play against Ish Sudhi, how he could play against Rashid Khan, how he could face the Braz Shamsi, mm. how Reverse could he sweep. face yeah, <laughs> the sweep. Kuldeep Yadav, the, the, <laughs> see they are the all top notch spinners. Mm -hmm. He has a huge problem with his technique. If you see his the movement of his feet, it's not perfect. Yes, if you are bringing him as an opener. So thank you very much. This is cricket. You'd have to settle down on number four, number five, number six, wherever the Pakistan demands you. It's not that if you're giving your coming on number five, you have 10 overs. Go for the 30 not out. Go for the 40 not out. Why you're throwing your wicket easily? So I think all the responsibility mm -hmm. on the Usman. There are no excuses in the certain, cricket. Uh, Usman, how, how, how would you highlight this concept of players being comfortable on certain numbers? But, you know, like Asif mentions that once you're playing for Pakistan, you need to be flexible enough if you are either, you know, sent at any batting position and given any role that is defined. Uh, first and foremost, that is not this Usman. <laughs> I was talking about yeah. it was Usman Khan. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now talking about the flexibility in the Pakistan batting lineup and the approach that they mm. are going through. The, the only problem with this Pakistan team, much more than their resources, is their approach. See, the, it is all about the players that you bring into your side. Uh, that shows what kind of cricket, brand of cricket you're going to play for Pakistan. See, the players which we are having in the side, they are all having a romance with their statistics. Even Usman Khan, if you talk about him, he is a top order batsman. If majority of your players are into the side because they have scored more runs, that is because they have been playing top order. And once they are playing top order, they were comfortable over there. But once they come into Pakistan, side certainly you can have only two openers. You cannot have more than that. And since uh, some have to sacrifice, the senior players survive, the juniors have to sacrifice. And then one down, two down, three down. And once they are out of their position, they are not in their comfort zone and then they struggle. And now talking about our top order batsmen, talking about Rizwan, Babar, and then talking about even Usman Khan. See, they came into the side not because of their impactful inning. It was one of the main reasons was because of their number of runs that they scored. Usman Khan, to his credit, I think he had a wonderful strike rate as well. And uh, I, I think uh, K. Asif has been little harsh on him. I think uh, he, he's, a, he's a class act. He's, he's, he's a good player. And talking about Ish Sodi, I think he has taken him too leniently. He's a world-class spinner as far as I'm concerned. And then talking about Tamrej, Shamsi and Kuldeep Yadav, many of our Pakistani batsmen <laughs> cannot play them. So, so, so slight credit to Usman Khan. My namesake so I can I have to back him also and I think he had a wonderful uh, PSL and it was very hard to ignore him and uh -huh. he had got he got a lot of uh, positive credits from our former cricketers as well so that was one of the pressures that was coming on the PCB that he, they have to pick him up but where he was he performing he was performing in the top orders and suddenly playing at number three and four and you are throwing him at number five six seven he is not in the comfort zone and you don't expect him to be doing that well. My concern was, and I was surprised, one thing about uh, my surprise was that he himself stated that I start slowly. That is what Rizwan does. That is what Babar does. That is what most of our players do. Even our hitter, Iftikhar Ahmed, he takes a couple of balls to get his engine warmed up. So this is one of the things that Pakistan need to work out. And probably this is the most important thing, that Pakistan has to have a very, very dynamic approach to T20 cricket. And they have, uh, I'm afraid to say that they have an approach which actually uh, synchronizes with the one-day cricket rather than T20 cricket. Mm. Certainly as well. Uh, but uh, Asif, would you like to say something? <laughs> uh, no, a very simple thing. that uh, or See that when you talk about Usman, so we have a couple Usman of Usman. Khan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Malik Usman and Usman mm. Khan. Uh, Usman bhai, I'm talking about Usman Khan, not ah. about Usman Malik. <laughs> right. But see, uh, when the, the issue with the Usman is that, uh, see, he is a very good friend from, of mine. You know that I have a very good uh, relationship with him. But this is injustice. You are bringing him not on the right time. Okay. That the question is that is he ready for the international cricket? No, he is not. Uh, this is what I had said right before this this series that uh, after a couple of matches, maybe four or five matches, 
everyone will talk about that no he's, he's he isn't ready why just because of his batting technique internationally the the, the statistician are st sitting there and they will tell you your bowlers that uh, this batter is this, this is the problem with the batter he cannot play with the front foot he cannot go with the back foot he's not okay with his cut shot he has only one shot that and he could play only you in the... You highlighted all the shots. What is left in cricket? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> see, see, right. he could only, he could only, he could only play in the power play maybe all the fielders uh, had. That's mm. it. So I think this is not cricket and cricket is not a name of comfort zone, dear. Mm -hmm. Cricket is all about hardships. You'd have to go uh, for the hard struggles, talk about the legends. Talk about the way Shweb Akhtar got a chance in the Pakistan cricket team and then uh, the rest of the world now talking about that the only one Shweb Akhtar. Uh, how uh, Sachin Tendulkar came, uh, he heard the story from the Wasim Akram and Vakar. Vakar said to Wasim, who is this kid? Maybe I'll hit on his, uh, uh, you know, his helmet. Mm. And the very first time when he was playing, everyone was just making a mockery. And now he's a legend. So please, Usman Khan, or with all sympathies with him, now you're playing international cricket, so no excuses. Mm -hmm. So no, now there won't be any excuses, but mm -hmm. I think... Uh, but, uh, yes, I, I would I just like to add one yes, question. Yes, yes. Only one question. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse, please. See, I can talk about a player like uh, Travis Head. If mm -hmm. you talk about Travis Head, he has a certain role in Australian side, no matter which format he's playing. Mm -hmm. If you have given a certain role to a certain player, then you have to back him up. That is another problem with this Pakistan cricket board that they don't back their players. If you have given a certain role, which is very risky, and many a times you are going to fail rather than being successful, you have to back that player. Look at Azam Khan, they brought him in to be a hard hitter. But what happens is after a couple of matches, he's dropped out. So that is, uh, I think that is what K. Asif Bhai is also talking about, uh -huh. that if you have brought in Usman Khan, you have fast-tracked him into the Pakistan side. If, if by chance for a couple of matches he doesn't perform, his his history for Pakistan internationally. Well, I think uh, that the p people who have to define that role themselves are not sure of what their role is right now. I think that's the problem. Manager, uh, senior manager, coach, some th it's still confusing for me at least. I hope things settle down. But Kashif, you, uh, you would like yes, to add something. Uh, I, I also wanted to raise the same issue which Usman raised, but the problem is we have to understand what is the forte of all these players. If the forte of Usman is that he can play good in the power 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 play, so let him give that opportunity, give him that opportunity, give him th that chance. Fakhar Zaman is the best player who can utilize those power power overs, but he has never been given that opportunity. The one who can stabilize the inning, who can go a long way, is either Babar or Rizwan. So I think their best position is number four or number five because you have to utilize those power power overs, which we are unfortunately we are not doing it. Uh, uh, K. Asif talked about technique, technical players. So let's come down to this format. Who is our most technical player? Babar Azam. So bring him, that, bring him to that position where exactly he is required. At the death overs, we can have Shada, we can have uh, Iftikhar, we can have all these players who can, you know, create that impact in the last overs. But where are the players who can create that impact in the first initial overs? In the first six over, we need to have score some, somewhere around 60 or 65, but we have never crossed 45 or 50 runs because at one side there is Babar Azam, on the other side there is Saima Yub. Saima Yub take all the pressure of scoring run at a, at a brisk rate, which Babar Azam cannot mm -hmm. do. So Certainly. we have to understand, why can't we have mm -hmm. those two players who can play swiftly, who can increase the, the, the strike rate? Why can't we experiment? I think the main reason is that Pakistan team does not want to experiment. When it comes to Babar Azam, when it comes to Rizwan, we do not want to experiment. And this is exactly what Certainly. our problem is. We have not mm -hmm. been experimenting without uh, Naseem Shah and see what happened to us in the World Cup, what happened to us in, in, the, in the Asia Cup. So we have to s find out the best uh, solution. Right. Zaman Khan is the best bowler for, for the death overs. If Vaseem Jr. is the best baller for death overs, but we have never been able to use them to exactly the position where they are. Absolutely. I, I think pertinently, this is a phase where whether you just make those decisions right now. Because going closer to the World Cup, it's going to be very, very difficult. And now, of course, uh, we move on and we discuss uh, another major development in Pakistan cricket, which is where former Pakistan women's captain Bisma Maroof has announced her retirement <clears throat> from all forms of cricket. Uh, 276 games combined of one internationals and T20 internationals, 6,226 runs for Bisma. Uh, I think congratulations to her, uh, a career that has uh, given, I think, her 
uh, not only a platform, uh, but so many other players have looked up to her as well. And uh, international recognition has certainly been there as well. Uh, of course, I think it, uh, when a player retires, always it's a very, very difficult decision to make. But I think uh, congratulations to Bisma for making it at the right time. I think that is very, very important as well. Usman, uh, what would you like to add? I think she has been one of the legends of the game for Pakistan cricket. A uh, second most uh, caps as captain in mm -hmm. T20 for Pakistan after Sanamir, our legend Sanamir. Mm -hmm. And in one day, she is the third most capped captain in Pakistan and highest score of 99. I think uh, playing as a mother was a highlight of her career as well. And she was praised for that, that uh, Pakistan community and her family supported her too much. And she was one of the rocks of Pakistan batting mm -hmm. lineup and uh, uh, she led the team really well. And she was a good player in, uh, in itself and a very, very consistent in T20s and one days. So I think uh, she had a wonderful career and I think uh, she would be having a very wonderful life after cricket as well. Well, certainly. Yasif, uh, what would you like to, like <coughs> to add about this decision? And of course, like I said, a stellar career comes to uh, conclusion. Oh yes, 136 ODIs, 140 T20 internationals and then she remains skipper. First of all, congratulations for this uh, a remarkable record and uh, thank you very much you had done so many services for Pakistan but the good thing is I'm so happy that you have taken a good decision on the right time and I think that uh, need to learn from the two, uh, that the other players anyone men's team that uh, they're more than 42 years of age I'm talking about Shreya Malik and the other players they're still waiting for their chance so I think uh, it's a very good decision I was waiting for so long that uh, will break the ice and I think that uh, Bisma Maruf you have done Superb job. Thank you very much. Well, certainly. Uh, Kashif, uh, your thoughts on uh, this stellar career that now comes to an end spanning 276 international games. First of all, congratulations to Bisma Maruf. I think he she captained uh, Pakistan when Pakistan was at a very weak point. Pakistan team was not good enough. But now with the passage of time, she has helped all their colleagues to improve their cricketing talent and she has improved Pakistan team. She has given a lot of contribution towards the Pakistan women cr cricket team. And I think after retirement, she should stay in contact with the Pakistan team and she should be there as a guidance for, for the team. Certainly. Thank you very much, uh, Kashif, K. Asif and Malik Usman for joining us on the show. That, of course, wraps up Sports Extra from me and the entire team. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.